Hello, I am Dr. Atul Gaur. I work as a consultant in studies at University Hospitals of Leicester and its trust. I will be discussing about the aerosol isolation device. So what is it? The aerosol isolation device is a hood-like structure which covers hand and neck area of the patient. It is transparent, made of medical grade device and it has got good access on both ends, head end and neck end, which is covered by transparent clear dressing. And in the UK, it is it has a support of University Hospitals of Leicester and it's just trust and made by JEB Technologies Limited. And in India, it has support of Indian Institute of Public Health, Gandhi Nagar, Ahmedabad in Gujarat. So why we need it? And what is different than other types of incubation boxes or such devices? So basically before that, let us have some background information. Basically in COVID-19, we are concerned about aerosols, which are contagious. The small droplets are less than five micron in size and larger droplets are more than five microns in size. Larger droplets, they can travel for a few meters and before settling down, some of it can evaporate again and get converted into a smaller size aerosols. The smaller size aerosols can travel far further and can remain in air for hours. We do perform few aerosol generating procedures when patient comes to the hospital, like intubation, extubation, to control their airway or to put them on oxygen therapy, invasive or non-invasive, invasive like ventilator therapy and non-invasive like CPAP mask or nasal flow oxygen. We are also aware about indoor pollution and its role in respiratory contagious diseases. And we have seen in 2004, indoor pollution playing a greater role. In COVID-19 as well, we are aware about the cross infection. One Chinese publication says that about 41% chances of cross infection are there with COVID-19 pandemic. Our healthcare workers are suffering from morbidity and mortality. There are about 1.5 million healthcare workers in the UK and about 2.2 million in India and about 13 million in America. A few days back, there was a report that about 96 healthcare workers died in the UK. Also, Italian college says about 109 or 110 doctors died during COVID-19. So there is a concern about healthcare workers' well-being. Many people are trying to control this aerosol contamination. And as a result, there are many devices in use. You can see in this picture, an operator is using an intubation box to perform airway management. You can see the operator has inserted his or her hand through two holes in the intubation box. Now these airway control, airway management procedures are life-saving procedures and they are very complex. They require higher degree of skills and operator needs to move their hands around to control the airway. And many times patient gives some surprises like patient may regurgitate or there may be a difficult intubation and then assistant provides them endotracheal tube and other equipment to perform the procedure. In this device, you can clearly see that operator's hands are restricted. So it's a kind of a made to do box to perform airway control, or airway management procedures. In another picture, you can see uh, someone has described use of polythene sheet. And then they are trying to say that through polythene, clear polythene, one can see the video during the scope. And can insert their hand inside this polythene and perform the airway management procedure. But then one should remember that these polythenes, they contain aerosols and then they can deposit as a fomites or they can spread afterwards. And access is also a problem for the operator. 
In another picture, you can see that the operator has covered his hand with the bucket. So all these sorts of devices are there. And then we need to understand that why these devices are there. In these two pictures, one on the left, you can see that operator is using a polythene sheet along with the incubation box, incubation box. And on the right hand side, you can see same picture. The operator is using a big polythene sheet to cover the patient to, along with the incubation box. Now, we need to know that why we are observing these procedures or these safety measures. Or are they really safety measures or they are increasing our problem? Because if you look closely, then these intubation boxes, they restrict the operator's hands, movements, which, which is a mandatory kind of a thing, requirement to control the airway. And this polythene sheet, which covers the patient area, ultimately contains the aerosols, but then, then they can get deposited in the form of fomites. And when these polythene covers are removed, and taken to other place, they can spread aerosols there and then they can leave fomites all over the patient. So in a way, they can increase the problem rather than decreasing the problem. As per the feedback given to me by one of my colleagues, these intubation boxes are very cumbersome and they are losing popularity now. So let us see that how our hospital premises are. We normally have positive pressure operation rooms. Here you can see in grey colour one operation theatre and you can see various arrangements. This is the operation theatre layout. On top in the ceiling you can see a laminar floor. At the bottom on floor you can see a brown operation table. Surrounding that you can see in red colour surgeons or surgical scrub staff. And on head end you can see an anaesthetist and some assistants there and then you can see a few objects in yellow color surrounded surrounding the operators and in periphery you can see a few extractors or venting ducts so that is a normal operation theater layout air comes from the laminar flow and then goes through the vents and because there is a positive pressure then air can leak through the doors or vents out into the atmosphere or into the corridors. Here you can see the flow of air. On top picture you can see the velocity. When velocity is high you can see change colors like greenish or reddish color. So normally the, there is some velocity over the top of the table and then air flows in and then it moves out through the vents or ducts and you can see that normal blue color air where velocity is not very high and near the venting ducts, you can again see the velocity is high. In the picture, in the bottom, you can see the contaminants concentration, their predicted velocities and magnitude. And here you can see when there is a red color or yellowish color or greenish color, then that denotes the contaminants. On right side of the picture, bottom picture, the venting ducts are blocked. And then you can see that contaminants are moving around or staying inside the theater. While on the left hand side of the theater, you can see that venting ducts are open. And then you can see most of the time there is a clear air, blue in color. Also, it is important to note that in the near the bottom of the near the floor of the theater, you can see poor concentration of contaminants. So therefore now we know that in positive pressure airway, positive pressure operation theatres, we have two problems. One, air leaks out of the room through venting ducts or doors or scrub areas. And secondly, this air can contain contagious aerosols like during COVID-19. The distribution of virus-laden aerosols in COVID-19 was studied by um, a few scientists in China. The publication is due in July 2020, and this is early report. They divided the area where patient is there into three sites. Site 1, 
near air outlets, side 2 near patient and side 3 around doctor's office away from the patient. And then when they measured the concentration of aerosols, they found that at site 1 near air outlet the concentration was 37.5% while at site 2 near patient the concentration of aerosol was around 44.4% and at site 3 around doctor's office area the concentration of aerosol was 12.5%. So that means that this air can increase the, these aerosols can increase the indoor pollution. In this slide we can see that how negative pressure rooms are more effective when we deal with contagious disease patients. The negative pressure rooms means that there is slight negative pressure in the room than adjacent corridors or adjacent area. So air can come inside the room and then go from the room out into the atmosphere and then there is a study where they studied the air change rate versus efficiency in removing the aerosols. So on left hand side of the table you can see when air change rate is about 12 air changes per hour then 99.9% .9 efficiency in removing aerosols is achieved in 35 minutes while when this air change rate is increased to 50 per hour, the efficiency can be achieved in 8 minutes. Normal air change rate in negative pressure theatres is about 12 to 15, which means that in about 35 to 28 minutes, air gets clean of the contagious material. So let us have a recap. So now we know that there is a need of a device to help with indoor pollution or aerosol virus load. We need to get rid of it. Then we know now that negative pressure rooms are required to manage airborne contagious disease patients like COVID-19. Now there is another fact that in hospital we have suction systems or a vacuum systems installed which has got outlets in ICU, in operation rooms and in, on ward where we can manage these patients. My colleague from Labro University, Henrik Wartig, informed me about all these things and that's why I know about this. So basically negative pressure rooms then, there is a supply of the air through a duct and then there are two, normally two exhaust ducts which takes the air outside into the atmosphere and then these are basically negative pressure room so that air can flow in from the adjacent area into the room but then air doesn't leak out. So let us have a few words about suction or vacuum system. Normally these suction or vacuum systems are installed in hospital following standards of healthcare agencies. Each suction outlet normally removes 40 liters per minute free air flow and operates at 50 to 60 kilopascal negative pressure. There is a 4 second time constant that is the pressure reaches 38 kPa when it is blocked in 4 seconds. So I got a novel idea that can we miniaturize the negative pressure area. Now we should remember that technological advancement should reduce the healthcare cost. We know the advantage of negative pressure area or removal of the isolation uh, aerosols to directly into the atmosphere. But then it should reduce the healthcare costs as well. And then the second objective was to make it simple because it is easy to make complex things. But then when they are simple, they are more beautiful, more useful. And at the same time, we should have very efficient system. Here you can see in the picture in picture, a positive pressure operation theater. So how we can bring a negative pressure chamber concept into this positive pressure room. So therefore, we thought of this miniaturized device. 
which lies just near the head end of the operation table over the patient's head, where we perform aerosol generating procedure. Or when patient is in ICU on CPAP or nasal flow oxygen, this device can sit onto the patient's head and neck. So that was the novel concept and then we worked for it. So we developed a prototype with the help of a bucket and then we perform few feasibility tests to see that whether this device can sit on the patient head and neck area by asking a volunteer to help us. After that, we performed some usability test. We performed a fume test. So we created a fume inside the device and then removed it with the help of suction catheter. You can see on this prototype device, there are two suction tubes mounted on this prototype device. Normally, one suction tube sucks about 40 liters of air per minute, and two tubes will remove about 60 to 80 liters of air per minute. If the capacity of the device is about 30 liters, then this will lead to an air change rate of about 120 per hour, 10 times more than what a negative pressure room has. Therefore, the efficiency of 99.9% .9 will be achieved in a couple of minutes, which is excellent. In this slide, you can see a purpose-built device. It is made of medical grade material. It is transparent. Clear drapes on both ends are missing. This, these clear drapes are there to facilitate air change during aerosol generating procedure. The device can be removed after five or 10 minutes after performing the aerosol generating procedures and can be cleaned as per local protocols or local hospital policies for reuse. We listen to the advice of medical physics at University Hospitals of Leicester, NHS Trust, and we made this device using medical grade material and also transparent. We also contacted MHRA, a regulatory agency in UK, and asked for their advice. They advise us that the device is not a medical device because it is not an implant or a kind of treatment. And also, they advise that device is not a PPE as well because it is not worn by the healthcare people, healthcare workers. So therefore, they advise that device is a general category device and can be used in healthcare for the protection of healthcare workers. Now in this picture, you can see device designed as it is in India. The Indian Institute of Public Health is supporting um, its development in India. And again, we have followed the same process and same norms to improve the safety and efficiency of the device. Thank you very much for listening to me. In case you have any questions, please feel free to contact me on my email, gaur underscore atul at hotmail.com as is available on the first slide. Thank you.